Hello again. Um, in this lab, uh, we are going to learn how to fit logistic regression models uh, in R. Uh, to do that, we are going to use the S market data set that we discussed in class. Uh, so, this S market data set it's the SP 500 stock index. Uh, where And what we are going to try to do to predict the uh, um, the direction of the stock market, whether it's going up or down on a certain day. This data set has 1250 observations and nine variables. So first of all, let's load this data. Um, we need to uh, load the library ISLR first that has the data set and then we need to attach the S market data. Okay. Um, if you if you want to learn more about the S market data, since this is part of the ISLR library, you can use the help command or the question mark and then say S market, and that should show you the help document here, where it shows you all of the variables. Um, here we have the year um, variable and lag one through lag five. These lags are the percentage return uh, for you know previous day, pre previous two days, three days, four days, five days. Uh, the volume is the volume of shares traded in billions, and um, the today is the percentage return for today and based on this variable we are uh, saying whether the market is going up or down. So let's go ahead and start and maybe we can see what's inside our data set using this summary as market. Um, the only variable that we have uh, categorical is a direction variable. It's up or uh, and down, and we are you we're gonna use the logistic regression to uh, to uh, predict whether the direction is gonna be up or down simply because we have a categorical variable. Um, we can, um, if you want some numerical summaries on your data, you can look at the correlations uh, in the S market data between the variables. Note that we have to exclude this variable here because the correlations is going to be only for between numerical variables. So this variable here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, ninth variable. So we need to exclude the ninth column from this data frame and that should produce the correlations uh, you can see that the correlations are really low here um, between lags um, and of course this makes sense because um, you know if we were able to predict the stock market you know based on what happened yesterday or the day before yesterday then as we said in class we will be very rich people uh, we can also create a visual summary maybe bears that will, will create the correlation matrix and of course we need to exclude the ninth variable okay and so on we you can you can produce um, you know of course different numerical and uh, visual summaries than this. Now, in order to fit the uh, re um, logistic regression model, we talked in class that we uh, need to split our data set into training data set and testing data set. The training data set is the one that we're going to use to train our model or to fit our model. And then in order to check if our model is accurate or how much accu accurate uh, are we how much accuracy we have in our model, then we're going to use the testing data set. So this, in this step, we are going to split the data set into both testing data and uh, training data. So let's first say that we want to use um, uh, training would be only the observations where uh, the year is um, less than 2005. So since our data set is from like from 2001 up to 2005, we're going to split the data um, as, as follows. 2001 through 2004, this is going to be our training data. Uh, so the year variable here, note that year is a variable in our data set. We will want that to be the, when the year is less than uh, uh, or equal to 2004 or you can just say less than 2005. 
Okay, so that creates a, a, a logical vector, uh, of course the same uh, length as our data set or number of rows, but this only contains true and false. It will contain true only when the year uh, of um, is going to be less than five, 2005, otherwise it's going to be uh, false. So with this logical vector, we can subset our data set into two sets, training data, and this is uh, SMAR kit, which is our actual data. But now we want just the uh, training uh, rows. So the rows corresponding to only the true values that we have in this, uh, in, in this vector. That should produce a data set of 998 observations. And the rest should go to the testing data. So that's, um, if you want, uh, you can actually say this is training. We can create a testing vector, which is just the opposite of training. Training. Okay. So the testing vector uh, is going to be the same length as the training vector, but it's flipped. Whenever it's whenever the training vector is true, it becomes false in testing, and uh, so on. So we can say this is S market testing, or if you don't want to use that, you can just uh, you know as as we did in the lab. Instead of using the testing command, you can just say not training. And it should produce the same thing but for you know for the ease of um, you know to be able to understand what's happening in our program let's try to make it uh, you know very close very close to real English rather than program and the last thing we want here we want to also check the direction uh, testing because what we are trying to predict we are trying to, to predict the di direction uh, um, uh, variable in our data set so uh, we are gonna split direction and get on the direction for testing purposes later on in order to compare it to whatever we predicted uh, using the testing data set so that's gonna be uh, direction and this is only include gonna include the test the testing data. Notice here we did not put comma uh, because direction is just a column in our data set, so it's a vector and not a matrix or a data frame, so it has only one dimension. Okay, so that's direction testing, and it's of course 252. It should be the same size length as our testing data. So now after we splitted our data, we need we can uh, go ahead and fit our logistic regression model using the generalized linear model command, which is GLM. Uh, so I'm going to call it maybe stock model. You can call it whatever you want. Uh, stock model uh, GLM function takes a formula uh, where uh, so it starts with what we are trying to predict. We are trying to predict direction from the other variables like 1, lag 2, lag 3, lag 4, lag 5, and then uh, volume. Next we need to specify the data. Now of course we, uh, we said that we are using the training data in order to fit our model. So that's going to be training, um, training data. And the family for this generalized linear model is going to be binomial because we are using logistic regression and we're fitting uh, it's a it's a two uh, class either up or uh, or down. Um, notice in the book they they subset they they use the subset command. You can still use this command, but you and and and, and you know specify the, the training, but then the data set will be the S market. I think it would be easier and uh, to do it this way, but you can do it the way you feel is easier for you. Now we've fitted the model. We can look at summary of this stock model. In this summary. We got the estimates for all of these betas, um, but notice here the p-values are really high, 
And of course this makes sense because when we looked at the correlations, the, this is the correlation matrix, for example, between lag 1 and lag 2, the scatter plot shows no correlation between these lags and so on. No, you know, uh, so that's all af affecting uh, our model and if eventually this is when we try to compute the accuracy of our model, it's going to be, uh, the, the misclassification error is going to be really high. Now, to, to determine the accuracy of the model, let's fit or let's test our model using our testing data set. So we're going to first fit uh, our testing data using the model we created using the training data set. So I'm going to call uh, model uh, predicted probabilities uh, using the predict function. We, uh, we want to uh, to predict using the model that we created, which is the stock model, and the data set we are uh, gonna use for uh, to test our model as the testing data that we have here, and we want the type of prediction since we, we are seeking probabilities that's gonna be response. Okay, so these are the probabilities. Remember that logistic regression uh, um, predicts probabilities and does not predict the class, whether it's up or down. Now we have to make to find a way to uh, change these probabilities to the class uh, of our of the direction for the stock, whether it's up or down. It's simple. Uh, we can say model pr oh, underscore predicted direction. First of all, we are going to specify a vector that's the same length, of course, of the testing data because um, we're changing these probabilities to a class. So we want to repeat down 252 times. And now we want to change the down to up only when the probability is greater than 0 0.5 in that particular vector. So model predicted direction we're going to say that this is going to be up when using the um, um, you know this um, when this probability is actually greater than 0 0.5 oh. okay so now we have um, the predicted ups and downs. Next, we need to create the confusion matrix to, to check the accuracy of our model. Um, uh, to, to do that, uh, we are going to use the table command in order to tabulate the, this factor, the direction testing, and compare it to whatever we predicted, which is the model pre uh, predicted direction. just to be consistent with what we did in class. So, um, okay, so this confusion matrix here says, uh, first of all, these are the predicted values and these are the actual values from our data set. We predicted um, uh, 77 times, or uh, on 77 days, the stock is gonna go down. Uh, and in fact, it went down because we know this uh, from the testing data. And uh, this we predicted that it went down, but apparently it was actually up. So this was misclassified. If uh, if we go on, on uh, this uh, diagonal of the matrix, we can look at the misclassification uh, error. To to compute the misclassification error, you can use the mean function and say when the model underscore predicted direction is different from direction testing and that should give you a, um, a it's actually a very high uh, misclassification error of almost 52 percent and again as we said this is going to be very high because uh, you know our variables are not good enough for our uh, model um, and so you know, just guessing, actually flipping a coin would be even better than um, logistic regression model in for our particular data set. Anyway, thank you so much for uh, listening and good luck.